Hey, what's up guys? Hope you're all doing well. And today we have another setup review. So a bunch of setups here over on Twitter, which we're going to go through and rate or roast or really depends on the setup to be honest. Uh, but yeah, if you're not following me on Twitter already, I'll definitely do that because every couple of months we do a little call out for your setups and yeah, just take a step back and see what you guys have been up to. So the first one here that we're going to kick off is David. So he submitted this one three hours ago. So yeah, these ones just really keep rolling in. Uh, looks like he's got a dual monitor setup here. He's listed a bunch of specs, like pretty much every spec of his PC, which I'm not gonna read out. You guys can go ahead and read out there. It looks like an Intel i9 setup. He's overclocked that to 5.1. He's also got an RTX 3080 in there. And then for the peripherals, he has the G Pro Wireless with grip tape, I believe that is. Uh, Ducky12 Mini off to the left there, and then the Hyperx Cloud 2 for the headset. Very, very nice. And then for the monitors, he's got the Asus uh, VG259QM. That's that one on the left there. And then the XL2411P on the right. Uh, to be honest, I'm not a big fan of how he's got the monitors set up. Uh, the way his seating position is laid out, he's kind of forced to look like, you know, turn his head to either one or just look where the monitors meet, this kind of bezel in the middle here, which is not really comfortable when it comes to gaming. And the only reason I really make that comment is because, you know, this guy kind of looks like a bit of a sweaty FPS gamer, maybe a little bit like myself, uh, you know, just judging by the peripheral choice and also the grip tape on the G Pro Wireless. And also because this is probably like the most mouse pad space I've ever seen on this entire setup review series. I mean, take a look at this, half of his desk is no, probably like two thirds of his desk is literally just for mouse pad space, which is absolutely insane. This guy must have like the lowest mouse sensitivity in the world. And you know, he does have those two monitors mounted on uh, a monitor arm there, which you know, you can kind of just reorient those a little bit, which is no problem at all. And then wait, <laughs> wait a second. Is that, G <laughs> dude, is that G Fuel? Are those tubs of G Fuel? Okay, yeah, this guy is definitely a sweaty FPS gamer for sure. I mean, how many tubs of G Fuel do we have here, dude? Like four, seven, uh, nine tubs, and I have no idea what this bottle is, but I'm scared to zoom in even more. Yeah, just be careful with that caffeine, dude. Try not to, you know, just, just try and go a little bit easy on that. And then, yeah, for the PC, not too much to really talk about here. He's only included one pick, but, you know, pretty generic looking PC. Uh, liquid cooled i9 at 5.1 gigahertz, and then he's got the RTX 3080. But overall, David, yeah, it looks like a really comfortable setup. Another thing I'm a big fan of here is the lighting behind the monitor, just taking a little bit of that strain off the eyes, which, you know, can be a thing after your really long hours. And yeah, ton of mouse pad space. Uh, I like the way that you've got it set up, to be honest, really, really comfortable. Next one here is super, super clean. This one is from uh, Ga Ogu. Don't really know how to pronounce that one, really sorry. Uh, but what's really interesting here is the NZXT H1 with an extra back panel replacing the glass front one. So that's really, really interesting. Uh, you know, I saw NZXT, they came out with the H510 Flow Edition, which is pretty much an H510 with the front glass panel replaced with a vented panel instead, which, you know, you can say what you want about that. It's kind of moving towards a more airflow focused case, but I really think they probably will do the same thing for the NZXT H1 because, you know, thermals have not been great in that case. Uh, but this user has taken it upon themselves to just do the same thing. And I can imagine the thermals probably would improve quite a bit. As for the system, it's running a Strix B550i motherboard, Ryzen 5600X and a GTX 1070 and 32 gigabytes of RAM. Logitech peripherals and chair, wait, Logitech. Okay, so that's the Herman Miller Logitech collab. Uh, man, I've heard that's a really expensive chair, so Dan probably forked out quite a lot for that one. And then as for the monitor, it's the LG 35 uh, WN75C. Uh, like my desk uncluttered. Yeah, I can definitely see it's a very, very clean desk. As for the peripherals, it looks pretty clean. I think that's the G915, uh, the low profile wireless one. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe that's correct. And then as for the mouse, I believe that's the G502 uh, Lightspeed. But yeah, not a whole lot that I could suggest to you know actually improve this setup. I feel like you've presented it really well. Overall, really inviting and clean. And yeah, I could imagine getting some really comfortable gaming sessions in here. Uh, potentially, you know, maybe at night, it could get a little bit dark. I'm not sure what your lighting situation is, uh, but hey, you've got a lamp here. Maybe there's some lighting behind the monitor as well. Otherwise, great job. And yeah, thank you for submitting. This next one here uh, looks like the complete opposite though. It's not exactly, you know, cluttered or dirty, but it's far from what I would call a minimal setup. So we're going for the full productivity, uh, you know, just 
bunch of stuff on the desk here, which is fine. I think it's actually presented quite well, but let's take a look at what Mr. Good Times here has for the setup. So they say current setup here with a 10700 KF and a 2080 Ti dual 3060 AIO loop. Wait, what's going on here? Okay, so he's actually got 360mm AIO strapped onto uh, the GPU, so keeping that nice and cool. And then as for the monitors, uh, we have three 32-inch 1440p on the bottom, so boom, one, two, three, one is vertical there, that's quite cool. Uh, and then 43-inch 4K for YouTube and movies up top. Uh, switch between Ponage Ultra Custom, uh, Viper Ultimate and G Pro. Current keyboard is a modded uh, drop control, and then Shure MV7 for the microphone, and Sennheiser 5 ADXs for the headphones right over there. Honestly, when I see setups like this, I'm like, what are you guys doing with this many screens? Like, I have no idea like having that much information and, and stuff around me. Maybe it's one of those things that you, you really have to try uh, before you can kind of, you know, criticize it. But like 43 inch 4K panel up there for movies and YouTube, like I don't understand. I, I just, I, I can't get that when you have so many screens here. But it does look like you have uh, some more custom keyboards here, one on the left there and then two uh, up there on the right. Uh, I'd be really interested to see those as well. So maybe you should have included those. Uh, but otherwise, looks like a really comfortable setup. Again, I have no idea why you need so many screens in your life, especially at one desk. Hope you're enjoying it. I mean, a lot of people do take comfort in just a lot of stuff around them. It feels really cozy to them. So yeah, thank you for submitting. Not much I can really criticize here. This one here though, we definitely have to take a look at here. So uh, PNTN, uh, again, really weird Twitter names you guys have. Cables definitely have room for improvement. I know, but I was just making some adjustments recently, just left them undone. Dude, I wouldn't even care. I personally wouldn't wouldn't have even touched them. You know, maybe you can zip tie them to the uh, monitor arm there. But, but yeah, when I see a setup like this, uh, it just makes me feel good. I, I don't know what it is. It's just like really satisfying to look at because I feel like it looks really inviting, really clean, really just straightforward. And the rest is up to you. You know, the rest is up to you to have a good gaming session, get some good work done. Uh, ergonomically, works really well. You know, main monitor in front of you, other one on the side boom arm up here when you want to use it, lots of mouse pad space, compact keyboard. I mean, we could keep going on forever. This is a really, really good setup. And I think that's really it when it comes to, you know, building a good gaming setup. It's not about how much money you can spend or how top tier your peripherals are. I mean, we haven't even really looked at his system. I don't even know what monitors he's using or headphones. But yeah, just the way that the setup is organized and presented, yeah, it's done really, really well. But yeah, speaking of the PC, this too is really well put together, just really clean. And yeah, just really satisfying to look at, man. Just, you've done a really good job here. Uh, Sliger SM580 is the case. So it's a case that I've reviewed. Really high airflow for an ITX case. Uh, RTX 3060 Ti RG Strix, that's going to be on the left there. Ryzen 5600X strapped to what is probably a 240 mil liquid cooler, I believe, or a 280 possibly. Uh, it's a 280, he's got the Noctua A14s. And then yeah, Corsair SF750 for the power supply and about a one terabyte, one and a half terabytes of storage. So let's take a look. Uh, he's got some really close clearance there. And the way that he set this up for airflow is the correct way. He set it up for both fans, uh, you know, top and bottom exhaust. So that's really going to encourage air through the side panels and help those GPU thermals quite a lot. And for a 3060 Ti, man, with that big ROG Strix cooler, I can imagine this thing running very cool and very quiet. Oh, no way. So this is his keyboard as well. So super, super clean build here. This is a custom build. So it's a DZ60, five degree case, brass plate, uh, he's got some case foam in there. Cherry MX Reds? Okay, it's a bit of an odd choice, I think. I didn't really think people would go for Cherry MX Reds for, uh, you know, a custom keyboard build, but hey, I stand corrected. And then he's got the blank black keycaps, which looks super, super clean. And then for the mice, looks like he's got a G303 modded with uh, KLGM 4s and then KLGM 4s on the G Pro Wireless as well. AT2020 for the microphone with uh, Blue Compass and Scarlett 2i2. Overall, very, very clean setup. Thank you very much for submitting. Uh, yeah, this one was a pleasure to check out. This one too, very, very clean right under it. Uh, this one here from Thomas. Uh, wait, at Mr. President. Okay, I think this is... Okay, I, I know who this is. This is the guy from... This is one of my uh, Discord mods and uh, Twitch active users. Very, very clean, man. Let's take a look at what you're using. Oldish pick, but would not be able to get a pick of the current setup in time. Uh, only real changes are the peripherals, main 27 inch, uh, 27 inch main screen. Okay, so you've up you've upgraded the main screen 
and you've changed the peripherals, okay. Oh uh, yeah, okay, I would not imagine you to be using this mouse. Uh, I would imagine you'd be using like a G Pro wireless or something, but the first thing that I noticed with this setup is the lighting, or really lack of. I'm not sure what uh, lighting implementation you might have behind the monitors, but that is probably one of the main things that I would recommend. This light here, you know, maybe if you're not sitting at your desk, that would be, you know, all right to have on. But if you're sitting here gaming and you have like a really bright light in your peripheral vision, uh, personally, I found that to be not ideal. I've had setups like that in the past and my eyes, they just strain over time and they, they lose focus. They lose that sharpness over time. I don't know what it is. Uh, I just find it a little bit distracting having something really bright in the peripheral vision. So I'm not sure if that's how you're using it at the moment, but that might be something to consider. Maybe swapping this or having this turned off and instead opting for say, you know, behind the monitor lighting instead. Otherwise, not really much I can say here to critique it. Looks like you've got it set up really well. You've got a microphone boom arm off to the right. Maybe you swing that over once it's time to game. Compact NR200 over there, Ryzen 5 3600 and RTX 2070 Super. Overall presented pretty cleanly. I do like the plants. You know, that's something that I'm missing in my current setup at the moment is some plants or some greenery. Maybe where I took my PC away, maybe I'll um, actually put a plant there instead just to freshen things up a bit because it does make the setup a little bit more inviting. But yeah, not much I can really critique here, Mr. P. I do think it is, you know, overall presented quite well. Uh, I will say the, the monitors are a little bit off center. It's something that you might be able to correct as well. I'm not sure if you've actually done that, uh, but hey, just another thing to consider. But yeah, thank you for sharing. And honestly, that seems to be a common trend between some of these dual monitor setups. I have no idea how you guys, you know, are sitting so, you know, not centered on one monitor because most of you guys are going to be gaming, right? And you're not going to be splitting the games across two monitors. That's just going to be really, really weird. Uh, so one monitor being the focus, you kind of want to orient your setup around that one monitor. So here, for example, it's not really working. I mean, both monitors are kind of one side. You know, something to consider might be actually putting this as a vertical monitor and then having this as your main one. Whichever monitor is the faster one or more premium one, obviously make that one the focus. But yeah, ergonomically, I do think that is maybe one of the main tips that I'm kind of uh, consistently giving out here. But yeah, otherwise this is no slouch of a setup. We have a custom loop in the NZXT H1 uh, with the Alpha Cool custom uh, water cooling system. He's probably hooked up the CPU here and the GPU with uh, maybe quick disconnect fittings or done something that I've done previously with the uh, LT Solo pump lock. But yeah, as for the system, Ryzen 9 3900X and RTX 3070. And if you're only using the 140 mil rad in the NZXT H1 like I did for my custom loop, that's probably gonna get pretty toasty. But hey, hopefully you have things configured quite well and everything is under control. But speaking of setups with a bit more focus, here we have one from Jamie. And yeah, you know, we're seeing this trend of dual monitors, triple monitors, quadruple monitor setups. Sometimes it's just really refreshing to see a nice clean single monitor setup. And that's exactly what we have right here. So I think the way this is organized is really, really good. Lighting is really good as well. You know, I don't imagine there's any ceiling lights on or anything like that. Most of the lighting looks like it's coming from uh, behind the desk. But yeah, that alone seems like it's uh, providing the room with enough light and comfort to kind of just reduce that eye strain. So I'm actually familiar with the exact build that Jamie is running here. I I've seen it previously. So it's an NK M1 completely liquid cooled with an RTX 3090 and a 5950X. For the keyboard, he has the Leopold FC660C, Logitech G Pro Super Light for the mouse, and that's on the Artisan Hayati uh, Otsu mouse pad. He has that in mid. The microphone choice is a bit weird. It's the Rode Video Mic NTG, which is typically a, you know, a camera mic. It has a hot shoe mount, so kind of a bit weird that he's got that plugged in there, but uh, hey, if it's doing the job, that should be quite fine. Speaking of, you know, the single monitor, it's the Gigabyte Aura. FI32U, so 32 inch, 144 hertz 4K. That's going to be, you know, running really nicely with the RTX 3090 there. He has the LCD XC planar magnetic headphones. God damn, he spent a lot on his audio here, but uh, not so much on the microphone. But yeah, this is one of those setups where I really have nothing to say uh, to critique, really. Uh, I think the headphone stand near the mouse pad is a bit sketchy. You know, I can imagine myself, you know, doing a massive swing and then you know, possibly knocking that. I think maybe a better spot for that would be over to the left here, or even better, you could get a headphone hanger that goes under the desk, although, hey, maybe you don't want your expensive headphones being hidden, but either way, you could just reclaim that desk space a little bit better. You know, as someone who has recently switched to a dual monitor setup, 
it is borderline life-changing. I mean, in terms of productivity and just having something else on the side there when you're gaming, it is really, really nice. But I do really appreciate the focus and simplicity when it comes to a really clean single setup like this. And just scrolling through here, uh, this one caught my attention because I have no idea uh, what I am looking at here. Is this a PC? It is a PC. Why are there so many fans? <laughs> Uh, so he's like, they've like 3D printed a bracket. So they've got like an intake fan here, two exhausts for the GPU. Okay, that, that makes sense. But you know, two random intake fans here. I think your PC has enough airflow, my friend. I think there is enough airflow in this PC. Ryzen 5 3600X with an NHU12S, which, you know, 3600X is not a hot CPU. You don't need to jam uh, fans into your PC case. Uh, and then, you know, Strix 3070, which the Strix cooler is already huge. You probably don't need, you know, a bunch of fans here. I'll give you an A plus for creativity here because uh, that PC looks absolutely mental. You're obviously going for, uh, you know, a certain aesthetic, maybe like, um, uh, what is it, like ste steampunk? I, I think that's uh, the kind of aesthetic that we're kind of going for here. By the way, yeah, it looks kind of cool. Is it necessary? No, definitely not. I feel like those components would run decently enough in that case uh, without all of that airflow assistance, to be honest. Seems like more of an aesthetic mod in the end anyway. Uh, if we're gonna be honest, like it looks like you've done some detailing work here or some extra 3D printing and kind of gone for, you know, again, a certain aesthetic. Uh, if you really wanted better thermals, you know, there's the NR200, there's the Meshlicious, there's the NKSM1, all of them are slightly better than the TU150. So if you really wanted better thermals, those are three cases which would have solved your problem a whole lot easier and a whole lot faster. I mean, here is just another completely wacky PC build. What is this? This is from Glass Tube Tech. They say, just finished remaking the blown glass tubing on my personal PC. Photo of the desk setup with the older tubing in the comments below. Let's take a look at this. Okay, so there is one thing in this PC build that is really, really just, just grinds my gears a little bit, and that's the radiators. There's so much emphasis on the RGB fans, and you know, you've got six fans attached to each radiator, but the radiators are like this thick. So uh, realistically, I'm not sure how much cooling you're actually getting out of that. But uh, yeah, you probably could have gone for a little bit more uh, radiator surface area, uh, by the way of thicker radiators, which, you know, I can't imagine that's going to be really optimal in terms of cooling. But again, this is gonna be more of an aesthetic kind of PC. You've gone for blown glass tubing, which looks absolutely insane. Like I will say that I have honestly no idea what I'm looking at here. It looks pretty cool though. But yeah, in terms of like the functionality of a you know high performance liquid cooled PC, that's just really not doing it for me. I do like the monoblock on the ROG motherboard. That's pretty cool. You know, the tubing looks really interesting as well. Not a big fan of the RGB unicorn vomit, but hey, each to their own. And then I also have no idea why you're using an NVLink when you only have one GPU. I think maybe you're just trying to cover up the little NVLink connector. Uh, but these GPUs typically uh, ship with a little uh, plastic sleeve or rubber sleeve that goes over that connector anyway. This here looks like uh, the previous iteration of this build, which, uh, you know, I don't want to say that the old one looked better, but yeah, the old one looked a little bit better in my opinion. This looks it's just insanely crazy. What are these, like freaking dolphins? You have dolphins in your PC? What is even happening here, man? Uh, yeah, but I do like this one has at least a color theme. Then we have a picture of the entire setup here. We have the Alienware Ultrawide, I believe that is. Definitely spent quite a bit of money on this entire setup, probably mostly on the PC. I do think that is the main focus. But yeah, seriously, seriously mental work there. Oh, and this one's really interesting. This one's from Han, uh, who submitted their setup. I believe it was the last episode or the one before that. Uh, and this was the result. So, you know, I think my main comments were potentially downsizing that uh, keyboard because, you know, who, who really needs a keyboard that big, especially if you're only using uh, a single monitor. And then one of the main comments as well was to take that massive PC case and then just, you know, put it under the desk and reclaim a bit of that desk space. Uh, so he says, excited to showcase the changes I made since the last feature, cleaned up the desk and floor, moved to the PC, uh, moved the PC to the floor, uh, got an Acer Nitro 165 Hertz monitor plus a monitor arm, upgraded the keyboard to RK84. Uh, now I love my setup a hundred times more. Let's take a look at the after. Damn, it is a night and day difference. Look 
at that, it almost does not look like it's even in the same spot. I mean, the photo taking and the, the sunset or whatever's going on there, it does look a lot better as well, rather than just a sad overcast day. But man, the setup is 100 times better, like you said. Holy crap, man, that is a really good transformation. And to be honest, there's not a whole lot done here. Like you said, bought another monitor, bought a monitor arm, put the PC case on the floor, uh, oh, and a uh, you know, keyboard as well, but damn, you know, that's not a whole lot. When you compare these two different setups, you look between them and you're like, man, that's like really expensive, you know, probably spent thousands and thousands of dollars. This one looks kind of average, you know, it's, you know, it's just like, oh, that's a PC, that's a monitor, that's a keyboard. Yeah, that's a setup. This one looks really, really cool though. Then we have an FPS gaming and software engineering setup here from Muhammad. Uh, they say Ryzen 5800X and RTX 3080 Ti with 32 gigs of RAM. Uh, glorious Model O wireless for the mouse. We have an absolutely huge mouse pad there, uh, or really a desk pad. Uh, big fan of those, but not really sure I would go for a white one. I, th I feel like black would just be cleaner and you know it would stay cleaner and look cleaner overall. Uh, but hey, if you've managed to keep the white one uh, nice and clean over time, then more power to you. It looks like you've got, kind of gone for a bit of a white theme as well. White case, white keycaps, and white monitor arm. And they also say, looking to get a 1440p 240Hz monitor, what's your best recommendation? Uh, well, I recently reviewed a 1440p 270Hz option from Acer, uh, and that seems to be like one of the better options at the moment. Uh, and pricing is very similar to the 1440p 240Hz option. So definitely go back and watch that review if you haven't already. Otherwise, not a whole lot that I can say here. I do like the you know natural light and presence of the setup. Cable management seems pretty good. Do like the monitor arm and yeah, 1440p 240Hz would be absolutely epic on there and a definitely a big upgrade from the AOC 24G2, which is a good budget 144Hz monitor, but yeah, jumping up to 1440p 240Hz, that's gonna be absolutely crazy. And especially if you have an RTX 3080 Ti, that's gonna you know power that no problem at all. Uh, the PC kind of hanging off the desk here does make me a little bit anxious. You know, I would probably just move, move the PC under the desk if I'm honest. And then potentially, you know, if you do upgrade to another monitor, uh, you can have a dual monitor setup because then PC off the desk, you'll have a lot of space there. Just grab the AOC 24G2, slap that on the left, you know, put that in portrait mode. You've got a sick, clean dual monitor setup now. This setup though, you know, doesn't look like anything crazy. Again, it's not about how much money you spend or how much you can flex with your RGB and how many monitors you can strap to one desk. To be honest, these setups that are really clean, really presenting, just really welcoming. They're just, they're almost asking you to come sit down and play some games, uh, which is how I feel when I look at a setup like this. So for the PC, NR200, you know, nice and compact, that's pushed off to the side there. In there, we have a Ryzen 3600 and a GTX 1660 Super. And then for the main display, we have a 144Hz 1080p ViewSonic monitor. And then uh, a lot of the focus is on the peripherals here. So we have a nice Artisan Zero Soft mouse pad, a Vaxi Outset AX for the mouse. But yeah, again, not a whole lot going on, just not a whole lot of cash just splashed onto one setup, which is, you know, it's kind of refreshing to see, to be honest. Uh, instead, we have a focus on ergonomics and comfort, which I do appreciate quite a lot. Man, there are so many setups. And in terms of, you know, which setups I pick to feature, I just try and find ones that I have talking points about, stuff that I can either recommend or maybe, you know, they just really wow me and I kind of want to feature them. This one here from uh, Tassel James, again, there's nothing wrong with it. I apologize, I'm not doing like a full feature on it. Looks really cool, maybe a little bit cluttered for my likings, but yeah, overall really nice setup. There are just so, so many submitted, uh, like this one here, super clean as well. Love that orange lighting around the desk. Really works with that black theme, like you kind of got that nice orange and black theme going on there. Not sure what's going on here, bit of a laptop scuffed setup. Wait, do you have three laptops? What's even happening there? Three laptops, three mice. Okay, it's probably, you probably share a room with someone, right? Uh, this one's pretty cool. Uh, I do recognize that wallpaper. I see you, I see you, very nice. Also not too sure about how much I like the white peripherals. They do get a little bit dirty over time uh, and they just kind of show up a little bit more wear. But yeah, so many setups here, can't possibly feature them all. Uh, but do stay tuned, we will be doing this every couple of months, so do make sure that you follow on Twitter. Uh, I usually do like a call out and then wait a couple of days and then film the video. So again, thank you all for watching, hopefully you enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next one.